Good morning. Welcome to worship at North Bethesda United Methodist Church. My name is Reverend Kara, and it is so good to be in a sanctuary with you this Sunday after Thanksgiving. We welcome those who are worshiping with us on Zoom and online today. We give thanks to those of you who are here as guests, as visitors, as people who may have been gone for a long time and are just returning. Welcome home. We want you to know that all of who you are is welcome into this space, into this house of God, where we meet the one who made us and loves us and calls us closer. We have a special worship service today. You'll see we are celebrating the Christian year. Before I give an introduction to that, I have a couple of announcements. One is that next Sunday is the first Sunday of Advent, and we have a lot of work to be done in here and in the narthex and in the fellowship hall to make it look a little more festive. The choir can see it and I can see that there are boxes of Advent decorations lining the floor over here. And so if you don't mind staying after worship, you can go and get some snacks at coffee hour and then come back to help us put up wreaths and greenery and candles and all sorts of decorations for Advent. There is a job for everyone of any age and any ability. Our Advent services, our, our Taze services are continuing through Advent on Tuesdays at 7 p.m. We gather here in the chancel area for 30 minutes of singing and silence and prayer and meditation, and you are so welcome to join us on Tuesdays at 7 p.m. This week, we're starting an Advent Bible study that will be at 6 p.m. in the parlor. So just before the Taze service, you can come at 6 for a Bible study. If you prefer to do a virtual study, I'll be offering the same material on Mondays at noon on Zoom. I'll be sending out a Zoom link to everyone uh, uh, who's on the mailing list later this afternoon. So those of you who'd like to can join us on Mondays at noon on Zoom. You'll see that we have members of our service and outreach committee who will be in the, where will you be? In the Johnson Hall, in the in coffee hour place, who will be offering gifts of caring. That's an alternative way to give a gift to someone for the holidays where you donate to one of several organizations through our church in honor or in memory of someone. And there you will receive a nice card that our, that our office manager Gwendolyn made. And so you could stop by that table to find out more about that. Our arts committee, which helped to plan this service, is also collecting new toys for the children whose mothers are at the Green Tree Women's Shelter. The wagon is collecting those in the narthex for the next couple of weeks, so you can check the list and be sure to get those in as well. Those are all of the announcements that I have. We're grateful to all who will help to lead in this service. Today is Christ the King Sunday. It's the final Sunday of the church year. We gather this day to celebrate the reign of Christ and his victory over death, yet still awaiting the full realization of the kingdom of God. On this last Sunday of the Christian year, we're going to take time to walk through all of the seasons as we celebrate the story of God's love that we live out in the rhythms and cycles of the church year. For some of you, these rhythms are as familiar as the calendar and the days of the week. For others of you, this is new information. Either way, it's a fun way to take in the big picture and enjoy singing some of our favorite hymns from each season along the way. There are different colors, our altar guild knows this well, there are different colors associated with the seasons of the Christian year. These colors are often represented through the pyramids, these cloths on the altar and the pulpit and the lectern. They're in the stoles that I wear. And today we're going to have all of them represented as we walk through the Christian year. As Christians, we affirm that Christ comes not only in a past event, but also in our present life and the world's unfolding future. God's story continues, and we get to be a part of it, even now, as we build on the past and lean into God's future. The church year is cyclical. It's the rhythm of our life together, and it's the way we continue to ground ourselves in the story of God's love. So I invite you to journey with us this morning as we journey through the seasons 
giving thanks for God's time and for the variety of ways God's love is made known to us. I invite you to rise in body or spirit as our liturgist Jenna leads us in the call to worship. Good morning. Good morning. There's no sneaking in. <laughs> oh. Oh, thank you. This is the day the Lord has made. For everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven. We know the end of the story. As we journey towards that end, we start at the beginning. Uh, please remain standing and body your spirit for our opening hymn, Holy, Holy, Holy. United Methodist Hymnal, number 64. If you don't mind, I have a giveaway today. Or anyone who's feeling like a child who wants to come up and sit with me on the steps. Thanks, guys. I won't put you on the spot. I'm going to put everyone else on the spot. You can sit by me if you like, or there, or far away, wherever. I'm wondering about different kinds of New Year's that we have. Do you, have you ever celebrated a new year of one kind or another? Choir? What kinds of new years do we have? 
A birthday year. A new school year. What else? Lunar New Year. A new calendar year, right? We have New Year's Eve that's going to come up in another month or so. There's a there's a Jewish New Year that they celebrate. I know that they're um, that Muslim folks celebrate a new year. There's a fiscal year for people who do that kind of thing. We are starting. It's not me. <laughs> we. <laughs> We're starting a new year in our church next week. When we start Advent, it's when we start the new year. Have you ever had an Advent calendar? One of those, like maybe, like I get one at Trader Joe's where there's like a little door and you open and you get a chocolate every day in December. <laughs> you've never had one? Oh, well, you've seen it on movies. Well, goodness. Well, I have kind of an Advent calendar for each of you, as you see. It is a box and it has numbers in it for every day in December leading up to Christmas. But this is like a reverse advent calendar. So instead of getting something every day, I'm wondering if you might think of something you could give every day that might fit in this little square, like maybe a can of soup for Bethesda help. You could put in on December 1st, or maybe you could write a little note or a card and put it on December 2nd. Do you think you could fill this box in the month of December with the help of your friends and family? Do, do you think that they can, church? Your church believes in you. I'm going to give you, let's see, Brady, you can have this square one. You can have the rectangle one. Calendars are a way that help us keep track of time. They help us sometimes to make some new habits and to stay steady as we move through life that can sometimes feel a little all over the place. So I'm giving you this reverse advent calendar. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll go to Trader Joe's and find you your very first other kind of advent calendar as well. But will you say a prayer with me? Can everyone repeat after me, please? Loving God, help me to move in love with you and with my neighbor, morning by morning, and day by day. Amen. Thank you for being here, Brady. I know you've got a reading. I don't know if you want to go to prime time or if you want to be in the service, but Ms. Cici and Ms. Grace are in charge today, so you can go back to your pews and come up with a plan. And as they do that, I'm going to invite our first reader who will kick off our Advent reading. Seti will come to the front. The beginning of the church year is Advent. Our color is, well, it used to be purple. They changed it to blue. And so my stole is kind of a blend of purple and blue. And Seti is going to read for us about the beginning of the year. God has always been present with God's people. Amidst the changing days of this world, amidst flood, fire, and famine, amidst death, life, and new life, God's presence has sustained us. For generations, the people of Israel longed for that presence to be more real. They waited for God to step in and make God's presence known. And so in Advent, we too stop and wait, remembering that God amongst, among us in Christ to make all things new. In the midst of the waiting, God speaks in the voice of the prophet Isaiah to give comfort and call the people to prepare way for something new. This reading is from Isaiah chapter 40, verses three to five. A voice cries out, in the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up and every mountain and hill made low. The uneven ground shall become level and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all people shall see it together for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. I invite us to sing together the first two verses of the hymn, Toro la Tierra, or All the Earth is Waiting, number 210 in the hymnal.
In Jesus Christ, God steps into our world. In Jesus, God became human, Emmanuel, God with us. At Christmas, we remember how he was born of Mary, how his lowly birth shows us that God stands with the poor and powerless, how he feels for all our human struggles and shares in all our joy. And so we hear again the story of his birth, according to Luke. This reading is from Luke, of course, chapter two, verses one through seven. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went out to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. The word of God for the people of God. Our next hymn for Christmas is O Come All Ye Faithful, number 234 in the hymnal, and we'll sing verses 1 and 3. Epiphany, the light shines in the darkness. In Christ, light broke through into our weary world, shining the brightness of God into all brokenness, into all pain and sorrow and suffering and sighing, into every uncertainty and anxiety and hopeless place. At Epiphany, we remember how the light of God shines into our hearts and transforms us into the people of God intends us to be, and compels even those far away to journey to see the light. The word epiphany means to make known. During this season, we reflect on the many ways God has made known to us still today. Epiphany brings with the story of the wise ones, the first people to acknowledge Jesus as their king. 
Our hymn is We Three Kings, number 254, verses 1 and 5. Lent, penitence and preparation. Early in his ministry, Jesus endured a time of testing and trial. So remembering all the trials of Jesus' life and seeking to deepen our own faithfulness along his, we mark the season of Lent, 40 days of penitence and preparation, 40 days of setting aside the things that keep us from right relationship with God and our neighbor. 40 days of taking up a new way that can bring us closer to God in Christ. Please join me in the prayer of confession. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joy, obedience, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We'll sing verses 1 and 4 of Lord Who Throughout These 40 Days, number 269 in the hymnal. As Jeremiah comes forward to join with us in reading about Holy Week, I will give the introduction. Jesus lived a faithful life, teaching the people and his disciples more about who God is and how God is at work in the world. He healed the sick, opened the eyes of people who were blind and called people to repentance. 
He proclaimed the coming of the kingdom of God, but not everyone agreed with him. His words threatened those who were powerful and challenged the status quo. When the time came for him to face the authorities, he was abandoned by those who loved him. Even amidst his innocence, he was condemned to death, hung on a cross and left to die. Hear now one of the oldest hymns of the early church found in the book of Philippians, a song about the sacrifice, humility, and obedience of Christ. Philippians 2, chapters 5 through 8. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard quality with God as something to be exploited, but in, in, emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, and humbled himself, and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. We'll sing verses 1 and 5 of the hymn, Were You There? Number 288. And after we finish the fifth verse, we will take a minute of being silent together as we pray for the crucified people of this world.
Easter, the Lord is risen. The story of God in Christ did not end the cross. On the third day, something strange happened. Jesus was raised from the dead. In the resurrection, God shows us once and for all that death does not have it the last word. God reminds us that nothing can keep us from the fullness of God's love. And so every Sunday, we celebrate the resurrection once again. Him, Christ the Lord, is risen today. Him, 302, verses 1 and 2. One, one and two. Pentecost, the Holy Spirit comes among us. In the days after his resurrection, the risen Christ appeared to his disciples several times. He told his friends that he would not be able to be among them forever, but he did promise that God would send them the Holy Spirit to journey with them. God kept God's promise. On Pentecost, the Holy Spirit came among the diverse people of God with great power and glory. And so even now, every year on Pentecost, we celebrate the presence of the Holy Spirit among us. We remember how the Spirit opens us to new relationships with God and one another. How the Spirit breaks down the walls of fear and exclusion and opens us up to the full diversity of God's people everywhere how the Spirit helps us to join in God's work of making all things new. A reading from Acts, chapter two, verses one through six. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven, there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Our next hymn is in the Faith We Sing, which is the thin paperback supplement to the hymnal. It's called Spirit, Spirit of Gentleness, and we'll be singing verses three and five, number 2120, verses three. Oh, three and four. Thanks, choir. Glad you're here, choir.
ordinary time for the living of our days. While we have seen God at work in the movement of the life of Jesus, we also see how God is working in us to make all things new. God's presence is real even in the most ordinary moments of life and living. Even in the struggles of the day to day, we know God journeys with us everywhere we go and shows us how to trust the fullness of God's grace in all time and space. In all the time of our lives, may we know the God who reigns over all our days. This reading comes from Ecclesiastes, chapter 3, verses 1 through 8. For everything there is a season, and a time for every matter under heaven, a time to be born, and a time to die, a time to plant, and a time to pluck up what is planted, a time to kill, and a time to heal, a time to break down, and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to throw away stones and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to seek and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to sow, a time to keep silence and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. Let us pray. God of all our days, we pray for those who are in days of pain, in days of fear, for those who struggle with illness or have a surgery coming up, for those who are grieving. God, we pray for all of the things we read in the news, for the people of every nation at war, but God, we know that you go before and after the headlines. And so we pray that you would draw near in all the common moments that make us weary. Be close in the not a big deal and that that's just how it is. Keep us tender and do not let us grow numb to the pains of normal with compassion and courage, we pray for all who worry about holding their lover's hand in public, for all who will be followed into the store, for all who will be misgendered once or 12 times, for all who should go to the doctor but can't afford to, for all who will be talked down to, talked over, or dismissed. For all whose names will be mangled in the mouths of others. For all whose difference will lead to sneers or slurs. For all who will feel forced to choose one part of themselves over another in order to find community. For all who have to work twice as hard. For all who feel pressured to speak for an entire community. For all who cannot afford to take a break. For all who will wake up hungry. For all who will go to bed hungry. 
for all who will be made to feel unprofessional because of clothing, culture, or class. For all who feel they don't deserve any better. For all who will not be believed. For all who just want better for their kids. For all that goes unnamed, unrecognized, and unaddressed. You, O oh God, are with us on mountaintops and in valleys, and on the long stretches of ordinary, you are there too. May your sustaining hand uphold. May your righteous fury arise. May your tender care embrace. And may your love do its work on all of us, awakening us to the roles we play, calling us to lives of collective transformation, nourishing us to dream dreams and prophesy of the world that you conspire to create with us where every day injustice is no more. God of fresh starts, of new beginnings of renewal and restoration, may we rise to the day's call to listen for the aches, to give voice to the beauty, to be a companion to justice. We pray with our hearts open and our hands ready, O oh God, use us, move us, and send us out in the name of Christ. Amen. As our ushers prepare to take this morning's offering, we give thanks for the generosity of this congregation for the ways that what you give is multiplied out in the world to do justice and to love kindness and to empower others to walk humbly with God. Thank you for giving generously. together using the prayer printed on the back of your bulletin. God of all seasons, we thank you for the opportunity to worship you this morning and to live for you each day. 
Bless these gifts and those who give for the work of your kingdom among us. Amen. You may be seated. Today is Christ the King Sunday or the Reign of Christ Sunday. Jesus Christ is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. He reigns over us and all our world with justice, mercy, and peace. So as this year comes to an end and a new one begins, may we sing all joy and praise to Christ who reigns now and always. As we celebrate this reign today, the psalmist reminds us of the majesty and grace of our sovereign and Lord in this scripture, Psalm 93, verses 1 and 2. The Lord is king. God is robed in majesty. The Lord is robed, girded with strength. God has established the world. It shall not be moved. Your throne is established from of old. You are from everlasting. I invite you to rise in body or spirit as we sing our closing hymn, all the verses of Crown Him with Many Crowns, number 327. together as the people of God, would you thank with a round of applause all who participated in reading and singing today. A reminder, if you'd like to join us to prepare the sanctuary for Advent, we will meet in, I'm not sure what time it is, we'll meet in 10 minutes, back, or 15, 11 15, we'll meet at 11 15, back here um, for uh, some job assignments as we get the space ready. I also want to let you know that Linda, our staff person, Linda Thompson, has, a, has made a card available for folks to sign 
for Katie and other family members of Mary Ellen McCabe who passed away on Thanksgiving. So be sure to, to add your name and your prayers to that and for her family. I invite you to go out into this space, into this beginning of a new year, a new day, a new week, full of the knowledge that you are beloved. You are a child of God of sacred worth and value. Go out in the rhythm of your days to share that love and to share that message with your neighbor. Go in peace. Amen.